Hi there, welcome to the Visual Modflow Flex video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll discuss the seventh step in the conceptual modeling workflow using Visual Modflow Flex. When the property zones and boundary conditions have been applied to your conceptual model, you must then generate one or more grids in order to convert the conceptual to a numerical model. Once these grids and or meshes have been generated, you'll be able to merge the conceptual model elements with available grids in order to generate a traditional gridded numerical model. For finite difference grids, all property values and conceptual model elements such as boundary conditions should be assigned to the appropriate grid cells automatically based on their geographic distribution. When you've finished assigning your final boundary conditions, you should see the, final, the, the following window. At this step, you can create finite difference grids, grids for mod flow, unstructured v-grids for modflow USG, or finite element meshes for a fee flow model. In this video we will explore the workflow for generating finite difference grids. Meshes and unstructured grids will be covered in the next video. And please note that it's possible to return to this workflow step at any time to generate a new grid or mesh. Click the Define Finite Difference Grid button to begin the process. This will open the Define Numerical Grid window. As you can see here, the grid generation process shares many of the same elements as the defined grid step in the numerical modeling workflow. At this stage, you must provide a name for the grid, specify whether any rotation will be applied to the grid, and define the number of rows and columns. The grid extents are calculated automatically based on the polygon data object which was used to define the conceptual model boundary at an earlier step. When you update the number of rows and columns, you should see the cell heights and cell widths updated automatically, and vice versa. This window also includes a preview window on the right-hand side, which allows you to load in data objects from the data tree. To load something in, simply select a polyline or polygon or points data object and click the Add Data Object button. Please note that at this stage, the generated grid must be fully uniform, but you will have an opportunity to perform grid refinements in just a few steps. When the number of rows and columns have been specified, you can proceed to the next step, which is to specify the vertical aspect of the grid. This window also includes a preview window to the right, which allows you to review your model rows and columns. At the top left, you can select the type of vertical grid. Three vertical grid types are supported, including uniform, semi-uniform, and deformed grids. In a uniform grid, the number of model layers will be of uniform thickness. At the time of translating the conceptual model to the numerical model, the properties will be assigned to the appropriate grid cells to represent the geologic structure. This grid is useful for transport or density-dependent simulations where it's desirable to have a fine vertical discretization. When uniform grid is selected, you must specify the, number, the total number of layers in the model. Cells in the uniform grid will be deactivated automatically as required based on the elevation of your model horizons. Any cells which will be inactive in the numerical model are colored green in the preview window. In order to change the number of layers, simply type the value of layers into the number of layers um, field and then click apply. In a semi-uniform grid, the top and bottom layers of the model of the grid are deformed, following the topmost and bottommost horizons respectively. In between, a set of uniformly thick layers will be generated. At the time of translating the conceptual model to the numerical model, the properties will be assigned to the appropriate grid cells to represent the geologic structure. This grid is useful where you have discontinuous layers. With a semi-uniform grid, you must specify the number of layers, and you must also specify a minimum cell thickness, since ModFlow does not permit lateral discontinuity of layers. In a deformed grid, the tops and bottoms of the model layers conform to, to the horizon elevations. You can refine the model layers by dividing the structural zones into proportionally thick layers. Once again, for deformed grids, a minimum cell thickness must be provided and you have the option of refining each layer into a specific number of equally thick layers. In the table below the grid description, enter a refinement act factor for each uh, structural zone and click apply in order to review the changes to the grid in the preview window. 
When the vertical grid has been defined, you can click the Finished button to generate the grid, which will now be available for the conceptual to numerical model conversion process. When you click the Finish button, you'll arrive at the View Finite Difference Grid workflow step, which is shown here, and you should also see a new model grid appear in the Model Explorer. At this stage, you have the opportunity to perform edits to the model grids and layers, activate or deactivate grid cells, and to create additional child grids. The Edit Grid and Edit Layer windows um, work the same way as the Edit Grid or Edit Layer functionality in the numerical modeling workflow, which was covered in a recent video. A link to this video has been included in the video description. If required, perform the necessary refinements uh, and then click OK and you should then see a new grid added into the Model Explorer once again. A higher resolution child grid can also be created within any numerical model and used for running local grid refinements or Modflow LGR simulations. Refined child grids are often used to improve simulation accuracy around areas of interest within your simulation domain. You can define these higher resolution child grids at this stage by clicking on the Define Child Grid button. If this is selected, then there are two additional steps to complete before finishing the grid. If a child grid will be created, then simply select the range of rows and columns in which the child grid will be created and provide a refinement ratio. You can then click the Preview button to review the proposed child grid. As with other preview windows, you'd be able to add in uh, data objects using this Add Data Object button. When the location of the child grid is defined, click Next, and then define the vertical aspect of the child grid. Once again, you'll be able to provide a refinement ratio on a layer-by-layer -layer basis or globally for every layer within your child model. When you finish defining the vertical aspect of the grid, click Finish. Please note that uh, Visual Modflow Flex and Modflow LGR support a maximum of nine child grids within, within a single parent grid. But please note that you cannot create a child grid within a child grid, and child grids cannot overlap and must have at least one parent grid cell in between them. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual Modflow Flex training videos. In the next video, I'll discuss the process for generating unstructured grids for Modflow USG runs and finite element meshes for fee flow models. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the VModFlex support page on our website. A link has been provided in the video description.